Hello, I'm Bob Nudd. I'm here today in Northern Ireland on one of the more famous sections. It's known as Corner Grade. I'm sitting on Peg 27 and this section brings back fond memories for me because it was on here in 1978, that's 14 years ago, that uh, on Peg 30, as a complete novice, I caught 166 pounds, nine and a half ounces of fish. I was using a, a 14 foot glass pole sitting on a wicker basket and uh, I happened to win the match. In those days uh, people like Kevin Ashurst and Ian Heaps they were my heroes they didn't even know me I just started fishing so for me it, it was brilliant to, to come here as a complete amateur and, and win a competition and that's really what set me on the road to match fishing and pole fishing as well because I realized how efficient a pole can be even in the hands, really then as an amateur with a lot of fish, you can do some damage. So once you really get to know it as a professional, it can be good. It can be a very efficient tool. So really from then on, and that was, as I say, that was 14 years ago, that really is what spurred me on to, to match fishing and, and, and then luckily getting picked for England, which got me into Italy and to learn all the Italian techniques of pole fishing, into France for the French techniques, and I decided to specialise in it. So, for me, really, that was the start of it. Here, on corner grade, uh, was, was really the beginning of, of my match fishing career. And, and if you think back, it's only 14 years, it's, it's a very short career, but um, it's been fairly successful. Now today we've been catching some fish here already. I've, I've already caught 20, 30, 40 pound of bream and uh, I'm going to show you how to catch some more. Right. Right, let's get back out there for another one. One important thing to remember when you're shipping out a pole is to to get the float and the bait to lay in the line that the river's flowing. As you go out, if you just lift up with your left hand, I'll just try and do it slowly and point the rod downstream so you lay the bait in the line. It doesn't want to go out in a tangled heap. Lay it in line with the way that the water's flowing. And when you're feeding, now you've got to feed and hold the pole. So what you do is you push the pole between your legs and you can hold it. You can rest your arm on your knee and look, I can hold a 12 metre pole with one finger there. Look, just one finger to hold it, to support it. This leaves the right hand free to feed. That's most important. So you back, you can hold it with one hand. You can even strike with that hand if you need to. Then throw the ball of ground bait behind the float. It's about a metre behind it, a nice ball of cloud. And then bring the pole back in the position that you're actually going to fish with it. That's holding it in the right hand, running your arm along the pole and then just supporting with your left hand. Ready to do the strike, because that's, that's, that's the hand that does the actual striking. Just support it, keep the float steady as you're running downstream. And when it's really windy it makes it more difficult, but uh, just try and keep the float as still as possible. That length of line I've got between the float and the tip helps. I've got a reasonable amount of line. If necessary I can bury it under the water slightly. Just ease the float down waiting for the bite. There. And the fish are well down the peg, they're still well down the peg. Which means they're still very wary. It's a good job we're using this small hook. I think if I had something like a 14 or a or a 12 on, we probably wouldn't be getting any bites at all. Got to fool these fish into taking. Here we go. Down the peg, just waiting for the bite. It's fairly warm now, it's midday, the sun's up. It, it's fabulous weather for Ireland. I just had a little bite then, an indication of a fish. I thought it was on because the float lifted. Just run it down again. I say the sun's at its highest now, it's, it's really warm and it's a wonder the fish are feeding at all. But they are.
Now, technology has gone so far. If, if I can think back to sort of eight, ten years ago, the hooks we used then, the points were forever going on them or they were straightening. But nowadays, with uh, the new technology from Japan in hooks, the actual very, very high carbon content hooks, they're brilliant. You can fish with the same hook for a match. Well, I've even got one that I've fished with for four matches back in England, a bread punch hook. I've kept it on the same rig, the same hook, and I can remember fishing four matches with it. So that's how good hooks are nowadays. I wouldn't recommend that to everybody, but uh, they're a va vast improvement on what they were before. You know, the float's just going and there's one on, right down the bottom of the peg. They're even falling back down further now. Another good bream on. Look at the elastic, just doing the work. It's easy fishing. It's easy fishing, it's no problem. Feed the pole back, just put it back, feed it back in your hands, ready for your unshipping point. Always watch for your unshipping point. Always be aware of your, where you're going to unship at. Get this front end of the pole out of the way. Wind's blowing, but it's hard. quickly bring it to the top this fish is fighting well but once again no problem because of the elastic just all the pressure on the right hand and back we go it looks like a nice hybrid just over a pound it's unusual to catch hybrids on the bottom I caught that one on the bottom down with peg but I'd be thinking that this sort of fish would normally be right at the front of your peg. They're normally really greedy and they're up in the water, but look at that, a beautiful fish, just over a pound, really hard fighting fish. Once again, perfectly hooked in the lip. So you even see the maggots in there now. Look at that, a beautiful fish. Catching fish like this, Reminds me of World Championships and, and what a pleasure it was to be there. When every cast in, the float was going under. And a similar sort of thing here today, except then I was catching on the drop. Catching a little bit quicker as well because they were smaller fish. But same sort of thing and uh, thinking about it and, and thinking back to then and the year before, I realised just how lucky I am. To be able to do this as an actual job, to be able to go fishing as part of a job, because I get so much pleasure from it, so much pleasure from actually catching, catching fish, it's, it's so important. And each time working out something different, each time learning, even the amount of pole fishing I do and, and fishing say three, four, five days a week, I still feel that every time I go out I learn something. I think perhaps once you stop learning, then that's the end. You, 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 if you think you know it all, then that's the end of your fishing. All the time you've got to be trying to improve your techniques and work out exactly what the fish are doing. What, what exactly are they doing under the water? How are they reacting to your feed? Do you need to pick fish off from the edge of the shoal? Are you disturbing them by going through the middle? And all things like this that you need to work out. And, and the fact of drawing fish all the time, drawing fish into your peg. So every time that float's going down, I'm just thinking to myself, where are the fish, what are they doing? Why haven't I got a bite quick enough? But today is just a pleasure day, it's just, a, just a pleasure to be catching fish. Not so important the amount of fish, there's a bite again and it's on. Every time it's so, so perfectly controlled, the strike and everything. The pole really is just a part of you. As long as you get to learn to use it, you make no mistakes, no tangles, no muck-ups. And in it comes. Oh, look at this, it's a beautiful big roach. There, yeah, lovely fish. Beautiful roach, probably almost a pound, I should think. Right, now we've got this one in. Let's have a look. Just unhook it, and then we'll have a look at the end tackle that I'm using today. 
A beautiful roach. There, gorgeous fish. Over a pan. Right, let's have a look at the rig I'm using today. It's not really a typical Irish rig, but uh, I found this year that the fish are a little bit more cautious, a little bit more shy than normal. So we've had to fish much smaller tackle, lighter lines. So starting off with the bottom, I've only got an 18 hook, which is unusual, but I'm still quite confident in catching a 100 pound of fish with this hook. It's an 18 hook and I'm, gonna, I'm using two maggots on the hook. Moving up from there, about 10 inches up, I've got two small shots around about number 10s. And then another 12 inches above that, three more shot, two number 10s and a tiny shot, which I, I just used to balance up the float to get the antenna shotted right down. And further up, about a third of the depth, I've got a tungsten Olivet. And there's a piece of sleeving running through the middle of the Olivet, and then it's plugged with a nylon bristle. This enables it to, to not move on its own, but to be moved as long as you pull it. If you're catching a lot of fish and that's too loose, then you'll see the Olivet will slide up and down. Plugged tightly, it can move freely without damaging the line. The line is 012 diameter, which is just over two pound. Now the swim is around about 10 foot deep. I've got a two gram float with a carbon stem. It's hand painted on the bristle. I always do this for more visibility, much more color. What I do is, is paint it white, paint the bristle actually base white, then use a fluorescent red and then varnish over the top. This is the best color for all sorts of lights, for dark light, light light, you can see it in a mixture of lights. Moving even further up to the end, I'm used, because I'm using an 18 hook, I've also used an elastic. If you use a, a stiffish flick tip with an 18 hook, you pull out of these fish, these bream every time. So I've got a number eight elastic through three sections, which give me a lot, a lot of play. I can catch small fish without bumping them and, and also hook bream and control them fairly well. Just a ston flow, but that's through three sections, that elastic, and gives you lots of play for the fish. That's our Irish rig for today. Also, I've got an English rig that I use. Not use here, but I'll, we'll run through it. This is a typical little English rig. And on this, I've got space shots. Starting with a hook tiny hook compared to uh, Irish fishing, there's a number 24 and then equally spaced up the line I've got number 11 shots eight number 11 shots I prefer these to styles when um, when when styles first come out I was, I was dead keen on using them but now I've gone against them I find shots are better they don't tangle as much they drop through the water smoothly and as long as you get perfectly round, pure shot, then uh, it's okay. Moving up to the float, just a very, very slim float. Once again, this is for fishing on the drop. This is a, a, a desque float. It's wire all the way through, wire tip. Once again, I've painted the antenna there for, for, for good visibility, because it's very, very slim but you can see any bites on the drop and, and all sorts of floats of fishing on the drop. You want a very, very slim, thin float. It's much easier. And moving up to the top of the pole, it's always important to have balanced tackle. So when you're using very, very fine hooks, fine line, then you want fine elastic. And I've got through here, I've got a, a number three elastic, very fine through two sections. But once again, it's silk smooth so that you don't bump fish. Very, very important to have balanced equipment. And on the end there, I've got a unique way of fixing this elastic, because on light elastic, you don't really want a heavy ston flow. So what I've done, 
I've got a small piece of silicon which is on the elastic and not on the end of the elastic and you can fix the line on the knot fix the line over the end of the knot pull the sleeving back over through it and there it's completely clean very light if you have a heavy ston flow flicking backwards and forwards it tends to catch around the top of the pole but this is so light it just never ever catches up and it just makes for much more efficient pole fishing far far better right now I've shown you that let's get back on that other rig and catch some more fish I hope they're still there. The wind's got up a bit now, rustling through those reeds there. But it's coming from right behind me, so it's not making the fishing difficult. In fact, it's perfect, perfect for going out and laying the line downstream. And then a ball of cloud in behind the float just for those fish to swim into. The fishing's really good now, there's plenty of fish there. They seem to be at the bottom of the swim, which, which means really there's not an awful lot there, but uh, there's enough to catch, there's enough to catch a hundred pound. They're just a wee bit wary, because it's so, the flow is so slow, and it's fairly clear the water. I'm just, putting a little bit of cloud in there, trying to interest the fish, trying to entice them into that cloud, overcome their fear. Because naturally fish are shy. They are naturally aware of baits and hook baits, even here. Although the fish look in perfect condition, probably sometime during the live, some of them have been caught. So you've got to keep feeding, Keep attracting more fish into your peg. You want them competing for food. The more the fish compete, then the easier it is to catch them. You can imagine if they're all fighting over, over just a little bit of feed that's going down, a few casters, if, if, they're, if they're fighting over that bait, then the chances are they'll take your hook bait. Because it, it just looked a little bit more unnatural, even to them, they know. They know that uh, it's not quite exactly the same as completely loose offerings. I'm having to run right down the peg now at times to get a bite. The bream are hanging right down there. Oh, that was a bite that I missed. One good thing about this long pole short line, if you miss a bite, you can go straight back in, you're ready. You're right over the top of the float, ready to strike. You can strike as hard as you want because the elastic is there to cushion everything. In fact, you do have to strike quite hard because you have to account for the elastic taking up. So to make sure you set the, the hook home, you have to strike fairly hard. Running right down the peg now. I've got about four foot of line between my pole tip and the actual pole float, just so I can get down my peg and keep the float fairly stable, running it in a dead line. Particularly in wing, windy conditions, it can blow the pole around, so you have to try and keep it as still as you can. Just got the tip under the water a little bit now. Just waiting for that bite. No bite, bite develops, you can start back up your swim again. Lay the line out straight and run down your peg, but feed again. That's the important thing, to keep feeding this cloud every cast. Keep the fish coming into it. It's always important with feeding is to keep it consistent. So the fish get used to the rate at which either maggots are flowing or falling through the water if you're loose feeding. 
or with this cloud, they're getting used to regular intervals of feed going through. So it becomes normal for them. I'm fishing with two maggots just, just about, just touching bottom. It might be a roach this one. No, I think it's a bream. The problem is if you if you if you've got too many bream in your swim, the problem is the roach won't come in. You know, if you're fishing and catching a lot of roach at times, then suddenly it goes dead, suddenly there's nothing there. The chances are it's because a shoal of bream have come into your peg. They've moved in and it, and they shift everything else out. Roach don't really want to mix. They keep out of the way. And this is another small bream. Fabulous fish you know. It's virtually a fish every cast now and even on this light tackle I'm using 18 hook sort of a pound and a half bottom I could still feel confident in catching 40 pound of fish in five hours. These are lovely lovely sized match fish just over a pound beautiful condition skimmers we call these are not quite bream but they're well probably a pound and a quarter that one Beautiful fish, just hooked in the side. There, lovely fish. They're beautiful. So the fishing is good. This is Northern Ireland and this is exactly what Northern Ireland's like. I mean, even this stage that I'm sitting on, it's been here about, probably been here 16 years, but it's still solid stand. This is. This is what the tourist board here have done, the tourist board, Northern Irish Tourist Board and for Manor District Council. They've put a lot of effort in because they know it's important for anglers to come here, for anglers to come and fish and enjoy themselves, bring their wives and families and just see what the fishing's like. And without a doubt, the fishing in Northern Ireland, particularly this area here and Porter Down, is, for me, it's the best fishing in the whole of Europe. I travel France, Italy, Belgium, everywhere, but nowhere, nowhere is, is there this sort of fishing, these stamp of fish, you can quite often catch 40, 50, 60 pounds of roach and bream, and it, it's just fabulous fishing. And the people are, are, are the same as well, they're fabulous, they, they welcome you with open arms, look after you. It's necessary, they need us over here and, and they, they like to think we're enjoying ourselves and I always do. This is, for me, it's an annual pilgrimage here every year for, for about a month while there's no fishing in England to come here and catch these fish in these numbers. It's just lovely. I mean, I enjoy catching fish. I don't have to, I don't have to match fish. I just get so much pleasure from catching fish. And seeing how fish feed, how they work, what they're doing, and, and try and work out all different ways of catching them. To catch them and to get them feeding better than I've done before. And that, that's what I did in the World Championships this year. It was all part of it. It's all part of overcoming the fear of the fish, presenting the bait, presenting the float, and then when you get in the bite, hooking the fish. Now when fishing with, with long pole and short line, the length of line is important, but it varies depending on where you're fishing. If you're fishing in a, in a fast flowing river, then you need more line between your float and your pole tip. The reason for this is the river's flowing and, and, and you'll need to get further down your peg to actually catch the fish, no matter where you're feeding, you need to get further down your peg. I did this in Yugoslavia two years ago when I won the uh, World Championships. I was fishing with a, with a line of about sort of three to four metres long. Even though it was classified as short line fishing, I had a fair length of line. So if you're fishing a still water, you may only need two or three foot. It, it varies depending on where you are. Today we've got about four foot of line. It's not flowing that hard, but I still want to get down the end of the peg because the fish are there. There's another one on now. This is fabulous fishing. See the elastic doing the work. Just leave the elastic to do the work. The fish can't break you, just feed back. Beautiful. Every time a winner. Every time you go out. You've still got a fish for them though. They're not jumping on the hook. You still have to 
work your float down your peg right down to the end of your peg and then the elastic's doing all the work now and just lean back on it just lean back on it here it comes now yeah, that's exactly the same size as the one I just had it's about a pound and a quarter beautiful match fish Beautiful fish. Just running down the peg now, waiting for the bite. Let's talk about poles. There's so many different brands on the market. Of course, uh, Naturally, I'm using a browning pole, but uh, there are so many brands on the market, different types and different prices, uh, especially on this long pole short line. And it's the same as everything. You actually get what you pay for, but you still have to be aware of what you actually want. Do you want a 10 meter pole, 11 meter? How stiff is it? These are, how heavy is it? These are all important factors. It's no good buying a 14 metre pole if, if you weigh about six stone and can't hold it. So you, you have to buy something you can actually physically use. I mean, I'm sort of a reasonable size. There's another bite and another fish on. This is how good the fishing is here today. It just runs down to the end of the peg and then immediately round. So, there's the elastic doing its work again. So, this pole I'm using is, is the top of the range brown in world class and costs about 1,800 pounds. Now obviously everybody can't afford that, but there are others which are, are fairly good anyway to use at 12 meters that you can, you can buy for three or 400 pounds. Another bream there. The elastic's doing all the work here, keeping the bream on the top, just swinging it back and in. Another one of these beautiful fish. Lovely, just hooked in the lip. Beautiful little silver fish, look at them. They are pro proper skimmers they are, we'd, we'd call them skimmers, but it's over a pound. Perfect match fish, beautiful clear eyes. Well this fishing's really superb. Now these fish are feeding, and I'm keeping them feeding because, because of the nice soft ground bait that I'm putting in to attract them. Running down my peg, and it's keeping them going. Obviously there's many different ways, and, and many there's a bite on the drop now, oh I missed it. There's many different ways of feeding and, and different types of ground bait. Here today, it, it's sort of slow moving, only nine foot deep. So we can use very soft ground bait and we can fish and catch fish on the drop and just on the bottom. If it was flowing hard, then we'd need a harder, harder mix of ground bait. You have to vary it depending on the flow and the pace of the water. Sometimes fish react different. If there was millions of fish here, if there was loads and loads of roach here, then I would be fishing fairly hard ground bait, stiff to keep everything on the bottom so that I got the bite as quick as possible. But that's when there's loads and loads of fish competing for bait and they're easy to catch. When you sort of can use size 12 hooks and three or four maggots. Quite often happens, it happens probably here for about a period of one or two weeks when you can fish like that. But when, when the fish actually thin out, then you need to use all your cunning to actually catch them, to get them to take. Just once again running right down the end of the peg. I'm amazed actually that the fish are that far down and there's another one on already. But they're, they're well down, it just shows that cloud is doing its work, it's drifting downstream, drawing those fish in, 
Well, this one seems to be wanting to, to run off pretty quickly. Maybe another hybrid. Silk smooth, just easing the pole back. And in it comes. Also, it, apart from ground baiting, you can loose feed, loose feed with maggots, and you get a similar sort of effect as this cloud ground bait. Except the reason, the reason I'm using the cloud is it will draw fish from much further. Maggots will drop. In this water, maggots will drop within approximately about a yard, I should think. So they've got no real drawing power. This just seems to be quite an active fish. But uh, with the cloud, it's probably running as much as 20 yards downstream, even though there's very little flow. So it means my swim's being topped up all the time with fish. It's a really hard fighting fish. Keep it under control. The elastic's doing its work. It's, it must be out there sort of, or something like six or eight foot now. Six or eight foot and it's pulling right out. Ooh, this is one of the most liveliest fish we've had. Probably should be a hybrid if it's fighting like this, I would have thought. They are really the hardest fighting fish of all amongst coarse fish. They really, really do go. It's unusual, fighting unusually hard. Look at it swirling on the top. Oh, it's a big hybrid, this one. Beautiful fish. Really hard fighting fish. You don't often catch these ones. They're the craftiest of all as well. Usually right up in the water. Look at the time this one's taken to get in. They're so hard fighting. Much more hard fighting than a bream or a roach. And it still won't come up. I'm putting all the strain, all the pressure I can on this elastic. Look at the size of that one. It's must be two pound fish, that. It's in the net, a really hard fighting hybrid. It's all solid, solid power and muscle, that one. Look at that. It's a, it's a fish that's probably lived here all its life, this one. Craftiest fish of all these. They do take some catching. You definitely wouldn't catch these on big hooks. Just hooked inside its mouth. Yeah, look at that. It's a good fish, that one. The fishing's still brilliant every time. We don't know what we're catching, whether it'll be a roach, a hybrid, a bream. It's a lovely mixed swim at the moment. Right, we're ready to out again and down the peg. Remember to keep feeding all the time. When you're shipping out, laying the line on the water correctly. As you ship out, lift the pole and then drop it down in all in one movement and throw the ball of ground bait. You know, about a metre behind the float and then run it down again. Ready and waiting, you're concentrating all the fish. In that ground bait you see there's a few casters, a few maggots, they're going to the bottom quickly and the cloud's drawing the fish in. Float set so it's just above the water, it's about halfway down the antenna. But I'm letting the float run through, I'm not holding it still. These fish are used to chasing the bait, they're used to it drifting down. It doesn't need to be held dead still. And the reason I'm using maggot is it's picking out all fish, it's picking out bream, it's picking out roach, picking out hybrids. They're all having a go at it. Something that uh, that is important when you're pole fishing is to make sure that you plumb the depth of your swim accurately, sort of from, from close in to as far out as you think you're going to fish. I mean, I've opted to fish at 12 metres today because I was after catching bream. And, and they do tend normally to, to hang out a little bit further than perhaps roach. Roach, if there's a lot of roach in this peg, you, you'd probably catch them at six metres. But bream are a little bit different. and Generally, the further you can fish out for them, they're very nervous fish, the further you can fish out for them, then the more chance you have of keeping them coming all day long. But uh, it's getting a bit more difficult now, running right down the end of my peg, looking for bites, trying to catch fish. But uh, as I was saying, plumbing the depths of your peg, oh, there's still one there. 
still on there, there's another big bream. Plumb in the depth, making sure that you fish. I've been fishing just about on bottom. And when I hold the float back, the maggots are lifting up slightly. Bream, people think just take food off the bottom, but they don't, they take food on the drop, they take it just off bottom. In fact, it's easier for bream to take bait off the bottom. They don't have to turn up on end to, to actually take. Funny we were talking about bream. Well, this is an unusual fish of perch. Now, you don't usually want to see these. A nice big perch, we don't usually want to see these. And when we've got this fish in, I've discussed briefly about ground baits. Let's have a look in detail at the actual ground bait mix that I'm using. You're always a bad sign when you start to get perch in your peg. They're very greedy fish. Mind you, it's not a bad fish. It's over eight ounces. You'd be grateful of those in a match. You wouldn't expect me to be using ground bait like this in Ireland. It's a surface mix. Just take a look at this. See how it's floating on the top? It's the last thing you'd be expecting to use here. See how the casters are dropping away from it. Now the reason I'm using this is because in fact the river here today is very sluggish and slow moving. It's about 10 foot deep and the fish are hard to find. Although I'm catching plenty of fish, you still need to draw them into your peg and keep drawing them in all day long. I'm doing this by using this light surface cloud with a few casters in it, just a mix a nice blend of ground bait to draw fish in, casters actually pull the fish in and keep them feeding and the surface cloud draws fish into your peg as it runs down with the flow, as the cloud runs with the flow. Now the mix I'm using is 50% lake, which is a continental ground bait and 50% breadcrumb. This gives a nice, although it's lake and this is a river, it's very slow moving, almost like a lake. So it gives a nice surface mix. If you need a heavier mix, then you can use a river mix with less brown crumb and, and more white if the river's flowing. So you have to vary it depending on where you're fishing. And in this, as you can see, it, it, it's, a, it's a lightweight mix. It's a fairly dry mix. I've run it through a riddle so that as soon as you throw it out, you, you just about holds in your hand. As soon as you throw it out, it hits the surface breaks up immediately. Bream and skimmers and hybrids are a very finicky fish. They don't always like heavy balls of ground bait on their heads. So nice surface, nice lightweight mix, keeps them feeding, keeps them going all day long. And this, this is what's going to happen today and this is why I'm catching. I'm running the float down through this actual cloud mix and it's very important. Feeding with pole fishing is very, very important. Important that you get it in the right position as you're running your float down, and important that the fish actually keep feeding and they're confident in the actual flow. So there you are, ground baiting. Without it, we wouldn't catch anywhere near as many fish. We've got another one on the drop. Now the line I'm using today is a high-tech line. These are, are good for pole fishing. They're not so good for fishing with reels, but for pole fishing they're fine because they're, they're, they're ultra thin in diameter, but ultra strong. Your elastic takes all the, you don't need a line with lots of stretch because your elastic's got that in it. So I'm using an 014 May line, which is quite heavy because I'm catching a fair few fish, an 012 millimetre hook length. 
But these high-tech lines, like the hooks, are really advanced and you can use a, a super slim, high strength line. Bear in mind though, it, it, it's only for pole fishing. It's not for rod and reel because with rod and reel you want line that has a little bit of give. These lines have virtually no stretch whatsoever. You're relying on the elastic for stretch. Another beautiful hybrid, look at that. Just over a pound and it took it on the drop. Beautiful fish. There. It's a lovely fish, look at that. Well, I thought they were going off, but they seem to still be feeding well. And it doesn't take long to go out and catch another. Two maggots once again. Now let's try a maggot and a caster. I should have tried this earlier because a maggot, if they take a maggot and a caster, the caster will smash off the hook easily leaving more hook revealed. Although I haven't missed any bites today, if I was having trouble missing bites, then, then I'd put a maggot and a caster on because immediately the caster's smashed and on a small hook it just leaves enough room then with the single maggot and the small hook just to get a hook hold. But we haven't had that problem today, but that would be the, the natural thing to do. I'll put a maggot and a caster on and I'm putting casters in so really the fish, the fish are used to taking them. Double cast as well is a good bait, but we haven't really, the, the fishing's been so good today, we just haven't had to bother. But notice how the feed keeps going out. Keep running, running the pole down the peg, running the bait, holding it now and again, just stopping it, moving it, letting it run. That last bite was, was the last fish was a hybrid, it was up in the water taking it on the drop. There's probably still lots more up in the water. You don't, you don't catch half of them. They're there, they're, they're very, very crafty. Taking bait that's going down exactly right. If I'd have been using heavy gear, say sort of six gram or five gram floats, we would not have even caught one of those hybrids today. That's how sharp they are. When I showed you this rig earlier, you noticed I used sort of multiples of small shots. The reason for this is that if you've got one big shot as a dropper and things start to go wrong and you can't get bites, then you can't do anything with it. But where I've got six small shot, I can space them out, I can move them, I can do any, that was just a real sharp bite and I missed it. And I can move them in any way, in any permutation I want to. Because usually when you start fishing, there are plenty of fish about and it's easy. And, and then particularly with match fishing, as the match progresses, it gets more difficult. As you catch fish and take fish out of the shoal, they become more wary. With small shot, you can split them, you can space them, you can push your olivet up higher, you can do so many things. There goes a bite now, that should be on. No, it isn't. That you can do so many different things to make things keep happening. You must, in matches in particular, you must keep catching fish. You've always got to be doing things to catch fish. And this is the reason today, there, yeah, that was a bite. I've put it in on the drop, and that would be another hybrid now, I should think. Straight away it went. I missed a bite, just lifted it up, and it's on straight away. This is brilliant fishing. This is fabulous fishing. This is what we come over here for. Look at that elastic doing the job. There's no chance of a fish breaking you at all. You can work with confidence. And these are all good stamp fish. If I was on a flick tip now, I'd be worried all the time that I was going to pull out of the fish. But as you can see today, we've had a really trouble-free day, silk smooth, just catching fish steady. It would be no problem at all catching a hundred pound off this peg today, and that's with a size 18 hook. Amazing, as long as you keep catching steady, the actual weight that you can get. That's another one of those hybrids. As I say, the real, the resident crafty hybrids of corner grade. That's yet another one of them. Most anglers never ever see these fish. They don't get caught. They're so crafty. You've got to use really light gear. They know all about heavy tackle, these fish. You've got to use really light gear to catch them. It's another good fish. Look, beautiful fish. Really solid muscle. Lovely fighting fish, those. A 
sun's come out again. Thought for a minute it was going to rain, but it's not. It's beautiful. This is not typically Irish weather. But I think if it had been overcast today, a little bit muggy and overcast and a, and a little westerly wind instead of a leastly, we'd have had even a better day. Because they don't like too much sunlight, you know that. Bream particularly prefer a day when it's overcast, not too much, not too much sun. They tend to be less likely to feed on these sort of days. I think we've been very fortunate to catch this many fish. But that cloud, I've kept it going in all day long, just to make sure you get fish in the peg. I, should admit, I thought the fish were going off, but I think there's a lot of fish up in the water. I think there's a lot of those hybrids in my peg now. I've been feeding it very carefully all day long. They've been taking food. And I could see by that last bite, I sort of lifted the float up, and there it goes again. There's another, oh, I missed that one. It's the first fish I've bumped today, that, I think. I've missed bites, but I actually bumped that fish. Well, that hasn't touched the bait, so... No, it hasn't touched the bait at all. Always bring it back in and check the bait. There's no good fishing with bait that's been smashed. Unless you're on 300 pound of fish. That doesn't happen often nowadays. Don't forget the technique of holding the pole. So important how you hold a pole to feed with. A lot of people can't do it, they put it in pole rests and all this sort of thing. It's okay putting it in a pole rest, but you can actually miss a bite while you've put the pole in the pole rest, particularly when you're fishing the way I am, fishing on the drop as well as, as running along the bottom. You need really to have the pole in your hand all the time. You can't fish for England and put pole in pole rest. The only time that I ever use a pole rest, and then it's important, is when you're doing initial baiting. Say if you've got a five minute pre-baiting period and you can't fish, as in World Championships, then you can put your pole in a rest to actually line up where you, exactly where you're feeding. It's better than if you're throwing big balls of ground bait to, to have both hands free to sort of securely and firm the ground bait ready before you throw it. It's nice to have two hands free. And that's the only time, and it is essential then actually to have a pole rest for that for that use and for that use only. Any other time you won't find me using one. There's always too much action anyway. Float's always going. I just, I just actually thought I bumped that fish and that can disturb them. That was another bite and I missed that. Straight back out again though. More feed, never forget to feed, keep feeding. Don't worry about feeding yourself, just feed the fish. If you want to continue catching. The secret is to keep feeding constantly, steadily. Make sure the fish are active in your swim all the time. That then was a lift bite. It just held up the bait a little bit longer than it normally would have done. The last shot was just holding. But this is good fishing, really good fishing. Yeah, running it down with peg again. See those fish must be at least seven, eight, nine metres down my peg from where I'm throwing in that ground bait. And it's not really flowing hard, but the cloud will definitely be going down beyond that. And that's where the bream seem to be lying. And just as it gets to the bottom of the peg, I'm hanging on to it a little bit, just holding it. A bit more windy now, so I've got the pole tip just under the water. Not too much, but just under the water, just to try and steady the float as you're going through. Every now and again you get a gust of wind and it's, it's a job to control it perfectly. That float needs to be going through in a straight line all the time watching for that first little indication of a bite. Float usually just dips, there it goes. Leave it, leave it, leave it. It's gone again. No, it's not quite gone. There it is and there it's on, you see. 
don't be in too much of a hurry to hit those bream bites. First of all, I've got a little initial bite, left it, give it time to take it, don't be too eager. And there you are. And it comes again. They can't do anything, they can't get off. Just make sure all your actions are smooth and efficient. Bring the fish to the surface. And in we come again. Yeah, this is a good day's fishing. There it is, a little skimmer. Before I go back in again, I'd like to show you a few of my favourite rigs. In fact, this was my most favourite one. It's the one that I won the World Championships on this year. It's a 0.8 of a gram Descay float. It, it shot it with an Olivet, but I've used it for fishing on the drop because it was about six foot deep where we were fishing. The fish were taken from the surface to the bottom, but with the Olivet pushed well up and with the droppers situated exactly so I knew what was happening, and this super slim float with a wire antenna, I, I knew exactly what was going on. This really was my, is my most treasured float. People uh, afterwards always ask you for your rigs when you've finished a world championship, particularly your, your own referee, he always wants it, but uh, this was one I wouldn't part with. I still fish with it and I still use it, but uh, I'd hate to lose it. And this is, this is a rig for fishing in, on the ban at uh, Verner's Bridge. It's a 12 gram, really, really big tungsten Olivet, specially made for me. It's a 10, 10 gram tungsten Olivet and then I've got two gram of, of droppers on there. Once again, it's painted top and a, a carbon antenna. A very strong float, but that, this is a size you can use on days where you're fishing, say 20, 24 foot of water and it's flowing very hard. You, you can go up this big. And this one is just a typical river, uh, English style. It's a gram and a half. The bulk of the float is on the top, painted antenna, bulk of the float on top so you can hold back with it, and a wire stem, a small tungsten olivet, just over a gram, and then droppers to, to space it through. So there's, there's three really of varying rigs of mine. Um, I have many, I have something like perhaps 100, 150 all made up, all to cope with different situations of pole fishing and, and you do need it. It's a lot of work, a lot of preparation, getting right because you, you meet so many different situations in this game that uh, it's just hard to cover for everything. Well, we've had a, a brilliant day's fishing, but uh, time's getting on, so let's go out and see if we can catch one more fish just to finish up on. Just remember the, the important points, the things we've gone through today about actually handling the pole, the length of pole that you need to fish. Remember, sort of think about your own physique. Don't try and overstretch yourself. But what we've done today is long pole, short line, and we've really looked at presentation. Presentation, that's been the crucial factor today to catching these fish. Because what we've done, we've fished 12 metres out, and we've run this float down dead in line with that cloud. So using a small bait, small hook, so we've caught those hybrids, we've caught fish through presentation. You, can't, you couldn't hold any other float out there in this wind. We've got a bit of downstream wind now, whether it be a waggler or a stick float or whatever, you couldn't run it down in that dead straight line. And that's the importance of pole fishing. Long pole, short line is presentation. And then once you've got presentation, you've also got the fact that you're right over the float. When you strike, you're straight into the fish. You've got your elastic, that's important as well. That cushions all the effects. Anything that you can do wrong, any gusts of wind that blow, 
the elastic's there to cushion all of that. So it's no problem. You can use fine line, small hooks, you can't get broken, and you very rarely pull out a fish. So it's just super efficiency. The ground bait, we've had a nice soft mix of ground bait. Every cast to actually keep the fish interested all day long. We've, we've sort of kept the fish coming into that cloud. We've, we've caught hybrids up in the water. We've caught bream down on the bottom. It's been a, a typical sort of day. We've, we've, we've been able to forecast exactly what fish are what, where they're feeding and how they're feeding. So the, the reason that we've caught today, as I said, it is presentation. Nice, a nice lightweight float, two gram. It's not a heavy float. It needs to be reasonably heavy, of course, because it's windy today. We're in a fair depth of water. But it, we've been able to control our tackle, run it down the peg, hold it, do whatever we want. And virtually, although the fish haven't jumped on the hook, we've, we've virtually managed to create a bite or, or catch a fish every run down. And this is, this is what fishing's all about, outwitting the fish, fooling them. They, they, they're always wary, always looking for, for an actual bait without a hook in it because believe me they have been caught before they do know what's going on there are there's one on that was a lift that was a typical lift bite it was a typical lift bite the float just lifted and there we have it our last fish of the day that didn't take long to catch bringing it around nice and smoothly So as I said before, pole fishing, remember long pole, short line, is all about presentation. That's why you catch more fish, because the bait is presented perfectly. You can see everything that's happening as the floats and the bait are dropping through the water. You know exactly what's happening. You're not missing many bites, you're being an efficient machine virtually. Well this is a lovely bream by the looks of it. Yeah, one of those nice bream, just over a pound, a beautiful fish. Right, there you are, look at that one. Another lovely fish, really is. Such firm fish. That's probably nearly a pound and a half. You'd be amazed how much these fish weigh. Right, that's it for today. There's the last one. Look, a pound and a half, pound and a quarter bream. Beautiful, absolutely perfect condition. Right, let's pack all our gear away, get it out of the way, and then we'll have a look and see what we actually have caught today. Okay, we've got everything cleared away. Let's have a look and see what we've caught. For me, it's been a brilliant day's fishing. It just goes to show what you can actually catch with long pole, short line, light tackle. In fact, there's so many fish in here, it's a job to lift them out. Just get them to the front of the net. Make sure you handle them carefully. Oh, that's a really good day's fishing. Something like 50 pound of fish, I should think. Mostly green. Green, hybrid, skimmers. Let them go. Let them go gently away, look at those. Beautiful fish. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this film. I hope you've learned something by it. It just goes to show you what presentation can do.